to discuss a 2019 American horror film called, Candy Corn. At the beginning of the movie, we see four friends sitting at the Cooper's Cafe, discussing plans for Halloween hazing. Mike tells everyone that they're going to give, the boy, the biggest scare this year. Coral tries to stop the boys, saying they're not kids anymore but they don't listen. Cora gets cross and leaves. The boys go to the counter to pay the bill. The man on the counter, Gus, asks them what their plans for Halloween are. When they tell him about the planned hazing, Gus requests them to take him along as well. They initially refuse but then make a deal with him and agree to take him along in exchange for free stuff. We're then introduced to Jacob Atkins, a shy, timid boy who's been annually bullied by these teens. He sits staring at the blank TV screen as he pops candy corn in his mouth. A moment later, he takes his bike and rides away. The bullies are seen at the Dr. Death's freak show, where they await their victim. On the request of her boyfriend Steve, Coral has also come along with the boys. Jacob arrives at the freak show, where he works for the owner, Lester. Lester tells Jacob that he's one of the teammates now and the crew will always have his back. He then goes to the stage to start the show. In Lester's absence, the bullies corner Jacob. Carol watches from afar as they start ridiculing him. When Steve grabs Jacob by the collar, Jacob pushes him away. Mike threatens Jacob, saying they just came for some fun, but if he tries to retaliate, they will end up hurting him. As Mike turns after this, Jacob pushes him to the ground. The bullies get enraged and start beating Jacob up. They kick and punch him till the last flicker of life leaves his body. Later Lester finds Jacob's blood spattered and lifeless body outside his trailer. He looks at the body, seething with anger and tells his men to bring Jacob inside the trailer. The bullies are seen at their place walking around nervously. Mike implies that since Jacob was the first to attack, they did it in self-defense. Carol loses it at this and leaves. Lester stares at Jacob's swollen and battered face in his trailer. He grabs an old, dusty box and opens it to reveal a book, a mask, and a candle. He puts the mask on Jacob and performs a ritual. He holds the lit candle in his hand and intones an incantation to resurrect Jacob. When nothing happens, he puts the things down and hopelessly sits down. A moment later, he looks back and his eyes widen. The next day on Halloween, Sheriff Bramford drives around town observing his surroundings. The operator, Marcy, tells him over radio that a woman has called twice now to make the complaint. Sheriff tells her that he's been looking everywhere but hasn't found any instance of lewd conduct. Just then, he sees an unclad, blood-spattered man standing by the roadside. He gets out of the car and starts looking around, but is not able to find anyone. After this, he is immediately called back to the office by Marcy, who tells him they have a situation. The sheriff drives to his office to find Carol sitting there. Marcy urges Carol to tell Bramford what happened. Carol seems reluctant to tell Bramford as Mike as his son. She tells him that she didn't want to come but she had no one else to go to. Bramford comforts her and tells her to go on. With tears in her eyes, Carol tells him about the incident of the previous night. She tells him that the boys might have killed the boy, that's why she's worried. Bramford consoles her and tells her that no murder has been reported, thus it's very unlikely that Jacob was killed. Carol requests Bramford not to tell anyone she was there and leaves. After this, Bramford goes to visit Lester in his trailer. Lester tells him that he doesn't like cops for they never prevent the mishaps and always show up after they've occurred. He tells him that his employee was beaten very badly the previous night, but now he's fine. Bramford returns to his car after this and informs Marcy that Jacob is fine. Bramford goes to Jacob's house after this, but nobody opens the door. As he gets back in his car to leave, someone appears to be watching him from a crack in the door. While Carol is chilling at her house, she receives an anonymous call on the phone. The anonymous person tells her that he knows what she did. The line cuts after this and Steve appears at her window wearing a mask. Carol tells him that she's very upset because of the previous night. Steve apologizes to her and tells her that Jacob is fine. This seems to put Carol at ease and she forgives Steve. While Carol is at the Coopers later, Mike approaches her and tells her he didn't like the way she treated him over the phone. Carol thinks he's talking about the phone call she received earlier. Mike tells her that he knows she ratted them out. He insults her calling her a scaredy cat and tells her to keep her mouth shut from now on. Carol pushes him aside and leaves. Gus arrives at the Coopers and tells his brother, Chet, that he had a very wild night yesterday. Chet cheers him on, saying he's really cool for that and they both start laughing. After this, Gus goes to the restroom. When he comes out, he sees a pumpkin filled with candy corn on the sinks. He goes to them and pops a few in his mouth. At his side, Jacob can be seen in the mask put on by Lester. When Gus notices him, he starts saying that the previous night was not his idea. Jacob pays no heed and grabs him by the throat. He lifts him up against the wall and brutally stabs him to death. 
Coral visits Steve at his workplace and tells him about Mike's threat. Steve tells her that Mike is just riled up because of the recent events and he'll soon cool down. A guy approaches them and informs them about Gus. The cops have arrived at the crime scene. They look at Gus's corpse wearing confused expressions on their faces. Bramford notices a candy corn lying by Gus on the floor and picks it up. He then goes outside, leaving the other cop, Conrad, to snap photos of the body. Bramford approaches Chet, who's been crying all this time. He tries to comfort him and tells him to go file a report so that he can tell them anything that could be helpful in catching the culprit. Steve and Carol arrive at the Coopers in the meantime. Bramford pulls them away and tells them that if there's any connection, they should tell him immediately. Steve and Carol are taken to the station where they tell Bramford that Gus accompanied them to the trailers that night. Bramford tells them that there can't be a connection, thus they shouldn't worry. Gus was into numerous other things, he says, that could have resulted in such a death. After dealing with them, Bramford decides to take Fox along and go to the carnival for more information. In the car, Fox remarks that it's very unlikely that something Gus was into could have led to such a horrendous execution. He starts freaking out and says that he's never seen such a brutal murder in his life. Bramford calms him down and tells him they'll get to the bottom of this. The bullies meet up at Bobby's house and discuss Gus's murder. All of them seem freaked out except Mike, who firmly believes that Jacob could never have caused this. Steve tells him that they don't know anything for sure, so they all should try to be a little careful but Mike pays no heed. He yells at them for freaking out over nothing and leaves. Carol and Steve also leave after this, leaving a very frightened Bobby alone in his house. After hearing some strange noises, Bobby goes outside to check. He finds a pumpkin with candy corn in front of his door and starts calling out to his friends, thinking it must be a prank. As he nears the door, Jacob emerges from a room and pins him to the wall. Using only his hands, he rips Bobby's spine out of his back, killing him instantly. The cop and the sheriff meet with Lester in his trailer and ask him if he knows anything about the murder. Lester asks them if they're implying that he had something to do with the murder. Bramford replies they're not sure yet, but they need to get any information they can. Lester tells him that he sent Jacob back to his house after the bullies ganged up on him and he now knows nothing of his whereabouts. Conrad arrives at the trailer and tells Bramford that there's been another murder. Bramford looks back at Lester, but he tells him that he had a rock-solid alibi this time and they can't suspect him. After the cops leave, Gate, who had taken Jacob's dead body inside Lester's trailer, asks him what he did to save Jacob. Lester does not respond and goes back inside. The cops go to investigate the crime scene. The dreadful sight makes Fox sick to his stomach. Bramford sends him out and tells him to send Conrad in. When Conrad comes, Bramford asks him how he found out about the murder. He tells him that a neighbor reported screaming in that house earlier. Bramford tells him not to make the news of the murder public yet. Bramford goes back to the office and tells Marcy that he might have been wrong about who killed Gus. He grabs his gun and tells Marcy to make the announcement that no one should be out after dark. He then instructs Conrad not to let anyone in or out of town until they've dealt with the situation and leaves Fox at the station with Marcy. Bramford goes home to Mike and asks him what exactly happened that night. Mike gets irritated and refuses to talk. Bramford tells him not to leave the house and keeps his doors locked. He tells him to give the same instructions to his friends and leaves. While Steve and Carol are busy at Steve's, Mike calls and tells them about the instructions given by his dad. After Steve hangs up, he tells Carol that the Halloween party is unfortunately off. She seems unperturbed by this and pulls him back to the couch. The town folks start blowing up the police station phone asking the reason behind the sudden curfew. Marcy answers call after call, telling them they don't have much information about it but they need to follow the orders. Mike calls Bobby to give him the instructions but the phone keeps ringing at his house as his corpse is being taken out by a couple of men. The cops reach Jacob's house and knock at his door. When he doesn't answer, they break it open and start checking. Under one of Jacob's beds, they find something wrapped up that has an extremely unpleasant smell. They pull it out and lift the cover to see a human skeleton inside. Coral and Steve go to the theater to have fun. Coral leaves for a moment, saying she'll return shortly. Lester leaves his trailer to see his crew sitting in a circle, wearing worried expressions. When he asks them what's the matter, Gate asks him to tell everyone the truth about Jacob. He tells him they will not back him up on this as they want to die with a little dignity. Lester only responds by saying that he will never die. After returning, Coral isn't able to find Steve. She sees the pumpkin with the candy on the stairs and starts calling Steve out, thinking it's a prank. Lester addresses his crew and tells them that a few people did something very evil to one of his employees. He tells them he's not ashamed of what he did in retaliation and is in fact proud as this is nothing but justice. This will end exactly the same way it does every time and by the end, he says, they should all feel nothing but pride. 
Steve finally comes out to Coral. She smiles at him as he nears her, but after noticing blood spraying from his head, her smile falters. She runs to him as he collapses to the ground and starts crying. From the side of the room, Jacob starts advancing at her. Coral makes a run for it and starts crying for help. Jacob slowly walks to her and grabs her by the hair. He grabs her tongue and rips it out of her mouth. Blood starts flowing from her mouth and she dies at the spot. Jacob picks her body up and places it next to Steve's. He walks a few steps ahead and collapses. Lester is then seen with him, trying to wake him up. He tells him he can't die yet as there's still some work left to do. While driving back from Jacob's house, Fox asks Bramford if he really thinks Jacob killed his mother. Bramford tells him he has no clue. Fox tries to discuss it further but Bramford lashes out at him in frustration. He tells him he's as clueless as he is until they get to the bottom, nothing can be said for sure. They see Steve's car outside the theater and go inside to check. They find both Steve and Carol's corpses inside and get alarmed. Bramford calls Mike and tells him everything about his friend's deaths. Mike breaks down after hearing this and drives straight to the trailers. Upon reaching them, he starts shouting, asking Lester to come out. Gate quickly informs Lester about this. Lester tells him that Jacob needs fresh blood and isn't ready yet. He asks Gate to tell the other crew members to keep Mike busy. The crew members thus knock Mike out and tie him to a chair. When Bramford returns to his house, he finds Lester sitting there in a chair. He aims his gun at him and asks him where his son is. Gate appears behind Bramford and knocks him out with a metal pipe. Lester then pulls out his knife. Gate tells him he's going too far. Lester gives him a look that quietens him and he leaves with his head lowered. Lester crouches and gets busy with the knife. Mike is sent out to the carnival by the crew members. The lights turn on and the loudspeaker starts playing an audio of Lester's voice declaring the start of the show. The sheriff's car arrives at the place. Mike starts walking to it with a smile on his face, thinking he's now been rescued, but on the car, he finds the decapitated head of his father with its eyes gouged out and the nose chopped off. He breaks down at this sight. Jacob emerges from the trailer and rips his arms off. Lester comes out with Jacob's candy corn and laughs as he kicks Mike to the ground. He nods at Jacob and returns to the trailer. Jacob starts pulling Mike's teeth out, one by one, as he wails in pain. At his next carnival, a woman asks Lester if the teeth on the necklace in his shop are actually real. Lester tells her that everything in his shop has a story and the teeth are indeed real. As long as the evil people keep bringing the innocent ones down, he'll be there, keeping the balance. We're then shown Jacob, who's casually munching on his candy corn.